Welcome to Community City Church, a church where real people like you and me can experience a real God as we do real life together. My name is Edwin, I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you decided to join us today for the online sermon message. We do want to let you know that we are having in-person church services, and we would love for you to join us so that you can grow in your faith by getting connected to deeper spiritual community as we learn to walk with Jesus together and change the world with Him. We meet right at the Fairway School every single Sunday at 150 Cross Street in Malden, Massachusetts at 10 a.m. Come and experience God with us live and in person. And if you are unable to join us, we are so glad that you are here. We hope that today's sermon will encourage and build your faith as you see that God is moving in your life and in your circumstances. Enjoy the message. Would you please join me for a reading of scripture? Today's scripture comes from various verses in Psalm 77. Please follow along with the scriptures on the screen. Hear the word of the Lord. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, it's hard to believe that 2023 is almost over. But as we prepare to enter into a new year, I think it's fitting to first reflect on the past year. Because it's in looking back that we learn about ourselves. It's in looking back that we remember the good and even the bad and how such experiences affected us and even shaped us. It is in looking back that we remember where we have come from and where we're going. It is in looking back that we can evaluate our mistakes so we don't repeat those mistakes. And it's in looking back that we're reminded that God was there all along during our mountaintops and even during our darkest valleys. And God would frequently have the Israelites look back and remember what he had done to deliver them and help them time and time again. He had them look back so they could remember how he provided and how he guided so they wouldn't forget him and be tempted to do life on their own without him. And in remembering, it would ignite the faith of the Israelites to depend on him and be obedient to him for their future. Because we all have the tendency to forget God, to run ahead of God and to rely on ourselves, which is why God said to remember him. And so I would like to do that in today's time together. This will be a time of reflection and dreaming as you remember him in all that you do and in all that you will go through in the upcoming year. And my hope is that during this time of remembering and reflection, you'll be able to experience God in a much deeper way as you reflect on the current year and prepare for the new one to come with him. Scripture says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Here in this psalm, the psalmist reflects on his discouraging times by deciding to remember better times. By remembering God's great works and his wonders. In fact, he will meditate on those works and those wonders and celebrate what God is doing in his life as it strengthens his faith. And so the first thing we are going to do is to look back and reflect on this past year. Looking back on this 2023 year, I would like you to reflect on what were some of the wins for the year. Wins are things that made you happy, that you were able to celebrate. Wins are accomplishments or things that happened that gave you hope. How did you see God in the wins? And what was God doing in you and through you? 
And I would like you to take some time to list out those wins. What were your God sightings? Meaning, seeing His wonders. And if you can't remember, I'm going to give you permission to look through your calendar on your phone, look through your photos, and that will jog up some memories from this past year. And for me, personally, some of my wins were seeing people from all walks of life coming together in one spiritual community to do life together with Jesus. It's earning trust with my neighbors, which has allowed me to speak into their lives about truth and about God. It's learning to deal with pain from my past and be more forgiving and more gentle, which has brought health to me and my relationships. Being able to consistently get to the gym and to take time to regularly do fun things that I just enjoy and seeing people find freedom get saved and coming into the kingdom of God. Those were some of my wins. But I want you to list down as many wins as you can remember from the past year. Things that happened, that made you happy, made you joyful. So I want you to take the next two minutes to go ahead and write those things down. Next, the psalmist also says, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and He will hear me. Next, I would like you to list down and reflect on what were some of the losses from the year. What were some things that happened that were not good, that hurt you or even hurt those around you? It could be loss of people, loss of opportunities, loss of resources, loss of dreams? What were some expectations or hopes that you had that were never realized? What have you been grieving about this year? What were the things that made you anxious and still make you anxious? For me, a loss was seeing friends struggling in isolation and not seeking help. Family members making unwise decisions that harmed them and others, and because of those decisions, it put a strain on my relationship with them. Seeing people choosing their sin and walking away from God. It's seeing what's happening in the world with the wars, with people being oppressed and taken advantage of. It's all the corruption I see. So go ahead and take time to reflect and write down your losses from 2023. What did you cry aloud to God about? Go ahead and list those.
Next, as you look back on the year, it is taking a look and listing down the different ways where you fell short. In a different psalm, we read the psalmist say, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. We all need God's mercy and forgiveness because we daily sin and we daily fall short of what God would have wanted in our lives. And this is where you get to reflect on the decisions that you made this past year that were not honoring to God. You said things or you did things that hurt people or even hurt yourself that you weren't proud of. I would like you to take the time to reflect on those times where you realize your shortcomings and you realize your sinfulness. Especially, look at your relationships. And how have your relationships been strained because of what you have done or even not done, said or even not said. And by acknowledging these times, it reminds us of how sinful we are and our need to confess and receive forgiveness from God. For me, some of the ways that I have fallen short this year is being too quick to jump to conclusions instead of giving people grace or the benefit of the doubt. I may have wanted to say the right things, but I said it in a way that was hurtful and forceful rather than helpful. Or maybe I wanted and needed to say something, but didn't because I wanted to please people, which just made the situation worse in the end. So I would like you to take some time and reflect on where you have fallen short over the past year and write those things down. After you've looked back and reflected on this past year, the wins, the losses, and the ways that you have fallen short, the next thing I would like you to do is to pray and talk with God about all that you have listed down. You can start by taking time to give thanks to God for those wins. Scripture says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God is giving us the invitation that in every situation we face, continually give thanks to God. You will notice that the scripture says in all circumstances give thanks. This doesn't mean to give thanks for the stinky or bad circumstances. But in that stinky and bad circumstance, we can still give thanks and remember 
that God is with us and that he is doing something with that circumstance as a result of our love for him. So I would like you to look at those wins that you wrote down and tell God, hey, God, thanks. As you give him a prayer back to him. So for me, it looks kind of like this. It says, God, hey, thank you that you are allowing me to be part of seeing people from all walks of life coming together in one spiritual community do life with you. Thank you that, that I'm earning trust with my neighbors that, and that has allowed me to speak truth into their lives and even speak about you in their lives. You know what, God, thank you that I'm slowly learning to deal with the pain from my past and forgiving more and that has allowed me to be healthier in my relationships. You know what, God, hey, thank you that, that right in front of my eyes I'm seeing people find freedom get saved and are coming into the kingdom of God. And God, thank you that, that even in the midst of everything that's on my plate, I am finding time to even relax and have fun. And so go ahead and talk with God for the next few minutes in prayer as you thank him for the wins that you wrote down. And you can do this silently on your own, or you can feel free to write down your prayer of thanks to God. then it is making a decision to trust God in the losses and the uncertainty. Scripture says, When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. We all remember the historical account when the Israelites were freed by Moses and Aaron from slavery in Egypt. But then they thought all was lost when they encountered the Red Sea with nowhere to go. And behind them was Pharaoh's army coming and chasing after them. But here the psalmist reminds himself and the Israelites of the miraculous parting of the Red Sea, reminding the Israelites of God's power, protection, and love, even in the midst of their circumstance and their obstacles. 
So can you express to God praise for who he is? Even though circumstances didn't turn out the way that you wanted them to, can you tell God that you will still trust him? And whatever you wrote down as far as a loss, can you surrender that to God and trust him to see you through while you are still facing and while you're still in the predicaments that you are in? Can we trust God even when we don't know what 2024 will bring and all the uncertainties that will come with it? When we see Red Sea moments where the waters have not parted yet and we don't know what to do yet, can we trust God in such moments that no matter what happens, He is the one that we can stand firm with and He will be with us. He will lead us. He will provide for us. He will protect us no matter what. And may your prayer to God be something like this. God, I cannot control the decisions that others are making, but I'm going to trust you to awaken them to the reality of your presence and your ways. God, redeem my missed opportunities. And God, I trust that even in the chaos of what's happening all around me, that you are working behind the scenes to accomplish your purposes and plans. May you part my Red Sea when you see fit, God. So go ahead and talk with God for the next few minutes in prayer. As you make the decision to trust him in the losses, in the uncertainties of your life. And you can do this silently on your own. Or you can feel free to write down your prayer to God. Then it's also talking to God about the ways that you have fallen short this past year. Scripture says that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If we have not done so already, this is our chance to confess to God what we did and even confess to others what we did so that we may find forgiveness and healing. So if you're making decisions that are negatively affecting your relationship with God, then it is repenting and returning back to God so that he can be first place in your life. If you have hurt someone with your words and your actions, then it's repenting and taking steps 
to say sorry to those people in order to make things right. If you're caught up in worry and taking matters into your own hands, that is repenting and admitting that you are controlling and that taking steps to start surrendering that control over to God. So it's looking back and reflecting on this past year. Then it is talking with God about all you have listed down. It is as simple as saying, God, forgive me when I did. God, forgive me when I said. God, forgive me when I thought. God, forgive me when I didn't do. So go ahead. Go ahead and talk with God for the next few minutes in prayer as you talk to Him about the ways you have fallen short this past year. You can do this silently on your own or feel free to write down your prayer of confession to God. And after you've done that, it is taking time to reflect and write down what are you hoping for God to do in the new year? What would you like to see God do in, through, and around you this year? What are some dreams and wishes? So go ahead and write those down. And your prayer is that those hopes and priorities align with God's hopes and priorities for you. For me, I would love to see God heal my wife physically. I would love for the people of Community City Church to continue to grow as mature disciples who make disciples. I would love for our church to continue to make an impact for Jesus in the lives of all those people around them. So what would you like to see God accomplish in, through, and around you in 2024? So go ahead and take the next few minutes to write down what your hopes are for the 2024 year.
Then the last thing I would like you to do is specifically pray to God as you prepare to enter into the new year. Scripture says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. This was something that I had the experience of doing when I was in college. The church that I attended at that time had a New Year's Eve service, and I remember at about 11.45 p.m., everyone who was at the service would go up to the front of the church, and we would all get on our knees and just begin praying. And this was when I heard the people around me praying both softly and out loud. They prayed thanking God for the winds of the year. I heard people praying and trusting God in their losses. I heard people celebrating, and then I heard others who were repenting for things that they had done. I heard people praying to God about their hopes for the new year and for more of God in their lives, and we would pray till about 12, 10 a.m. And then we would all get up, and we would celebrate and cheer and thank God for a new year. It was so cool to be a part of this where we got on our knees and allowed God to usher us into the new year. And this became a practice for me since college. Even now, when I got married, Kelsey and I take the hour before midnight to do this exercise. The first half hour is just reflecting with God like I invited you to do, and we do this individually. Then from 11.30 p.m. heading into midnight, we will come together and get on our knees and start praying. There is something about doing this that has allowed me to connect with God and those, those that I'm with as He prepares me for this new year. And when we are on our knees praying, it's really a posture of, God, I need you. God, I surrender to you. I want you, and I want you to walk with me from this day forward. Then we give thanks, and we trust, and we repent, and we give Him our hopes, our dreams, and we pray for each other. I want to encourage you to try this tonight as 2023 closes and 2024 begins. And may you have a posture of prayer and reliance on God as you enter into the new year. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have brought us through another year. And we pray that it will be your grace and favor that carries us through 2024. Thank you that we can remember who you are, what you have done, and what you will continue to do in our lives and in our circumstances. God, we need you. Forgive us whenever we fall short of what you would have wanted for our lives. And we lift up this new year that is about to be upon us, that we can live lives that honor and reflect you as we change the world with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings. And we will see you next year as we gather again on Sunday, January 7th, to kick off the new year together with God. We will see you at 10 a.m. sharp. Now, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. And Happy New Year.